What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look at our second round playoff preview video today between the Metropolitan Division rivals at this point I would say so between the New York Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes we're going to discuss how both of these teams got to this point in the playoffs what their head-to-head -head matchup looks like kind of comparing both teams lineups Offense, defense, goaltending, coaching, all that kind of stuff. All the minutia between these two teams. They're kind of where we expect them to be, right? So we're going to kind of go over the expectations for both of these teams. Are they where they should be? Um, and, of course, I'll be giving my prediction at the end of the video. So let's just let's just get right into it before we get any further. Um, I do want to ask you guys, though, if you like the video, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. So... How do we get to this point? So we're going to start off there and kind of going into the expectations. So the expectations for both of these teams, it's pretty simple. It's, it's the same path. It's cup or bust for both of these teams. I've already said, and I, I think this is going to be the case in the West, something similar between Colorado and whoever comes out between Vegas and Dallas. I think that's going to be the best series up until the Stanley Cup final from the Western Conference. And I'm not just saying this, because I will not say this for the other teams in the Atlantic. I think this series between the Hurricanes and the Rangers is going to be, in terms of skill, depth, and just kind of how hot the teams are, I think this is going to be the best series in the Eastern Conference playoffs this year. And I'm not just saying that. I truly believe that. And I think it's because of the way both of these teams got here. The Both of these teams, remember... Both of these teams back in, I think it was November, neither of them were in a playoff spot in November, right? We look back now, right? It was, I think the Flyers were first in the division and we know how things went there. But it's kind of funny to see how both of these teams got here. The Rangers definitely showed their dominance throughout more of the season. But no team has been hotter during 2024, the calendar 2024, than the Carolina Hurricanes. And they followed that up in the playoffs, only losing once to the Islanders in their five games. Um, so let's just start off with the Hurricanes. So the Hurricanes, yeah, they, they played the Islanders in their first round matchup. I said this in their advancing video with the Islanders elimination, kind of to wrap things up on a bow there. They didn't play their best hockey. I think most Hurricane fans will agree with me on that. They didn't play great hockey during that series. And it's a testament to two things either one what's the saying good teams find ways to win so even when carolina's not getting the depth scoring their defense is a little lax you know anderson giving up goals at really really bad times like twice in this series in carolina giving up a goal in the final 30 seconds of the period that shit's not going to work in the second round against the new york rangers you cannot do that it will not if it does happen Expect a short series here for the Hurricanes. You cannot have Anderson giving up those goals. But I'm not too concerned about that because Cooch is probably going to play at least. I would bet money that Kochekov plays a game in this series. I would be very surprised if he didn't play at some point. Even if Anderson's playing well. Okay? So that's the first thing. They beat the Islanders. They did their thing. But they didn't play their best. And then there's the other side of it, which is the more negative side. Well, they didn't play their best hockey. And if they don't figure this stuff out... They're not going to win against the Rangers. They didn't They didn't ever really assert their will against the Islanders. And yeah, they, they got a ton of shots, and they had, I think, 100 shots in Game 2, or shot attempts. It was 100 shot attempts in Game 2, but they almost lost that game, right? So, and then there's a couple times they had a 3 nothing. You know, they were trailing the Islanders 3 nothing. You do that against the Rangers, you're probably not going to find that success against the Rangers. And it's just a different matchup. And, and the power plays and the penalty kills, we got to get to all that too. I, I'm really looking forward to this video because there's a lot to break down between these two teams. Um, and then for the Rangers, you know, their series against the Capitals also ended pretty quickly and very swiftly. 4 nothing sweep, just cut the head right off the bald eagle of the Capitals and... You know, they really did a good job with the Caps, for the most part. And I think they were a lot more convincing with the way they won. And even though some of the games were kind of close, the, never, the Rangers, you never felt like they were really going to lose any of those games, even though they were kind of close, for the most part. Um, what's a really interesting storyline for both of these teams is the penalties and the, the penalty kill and the power play. I really want to get to that here, because... You know, Carolina is kind of gaining that reputation for, first of all, in the, in the Islanders early in the series. The first two games, they were diving a little bit. 
And and I think they cleaned that up as the as the series went along. But they were diving a little bit. They were getting some power plays and things like that. Fine. That's on the referees. The referees don't have to call that, but they were. So they were getting some power plays. I don't know if they're going to get that so much with the Rangers. And I don't even know if they want to. We'll get to that. Um, you know, those tick tack, those ticky tacky penalties, I think that actually favors the Rangers here because the problem is if they're calling a lot of the little stuff, that's actually a disadvantage for Carolina. And again, also a reputation for Carolina in the other way. They tend to, the philosophy from Brenda Moore is, guys, take a lot of penalties because they're not going to call everything. So even if they call one or two penalties in a game, you take 10. You commit 10 penalties, but you're not going to get called against for every single one of them. But the problem with that against the Rangers is the Rangers offense is so lethal, especially on the power play, you want to give them the least amount of power plays possible. That worked against the Islanders because the Islanders power play was basically like it was for PP, it's power play. It was 1P. It was power. And even, that, well, really it was play. I forget the power part for the Islanders' power play. They did a ton of playing and playing around with the puck at the blue line and stuff and fumbling it, but there's no power to it. That's not the same for the Rangers. The Rangers had the best power play in the National Hockey League. And not only that, but they are super opportunistic on the penalty kill. So even if Carolina wants to play the game of, all right, well, we're not good on the power play against the Rangers. Well, let's make it four-on-four four hockey and things like that. Or even let's make the Rangers take penalties. The Rangers scored a ton of penalty. They scored a lot of shorthanded goals. So in either scenario, I don't think this is a good thing for Carolina. But the key matchup in this series overall in terms of special teams is going to be the New York Rangers power play against Carolina's penalty kill. Carolina's penalty kill has been very good. And the Rangers obviously is the top in the National Hockey League. So that is going to be the most interesting one to watch. But, of course, Carolina's power play against the Rangers' penalty kill is also going to be a storyline. But the biggest, in terms of in terms of the powers going against each other, it's the penalty kill of Carolina and the power play of the Rangers. Keep an eye out for that during this series. Um, Shesterkin versus Anderson. And I threw Kochekov in there because I think we are going to see Kochekov, like I said earlier in this video. Shesterkin gets the edge there. I, I know Anderson played fairly well in this series and down the stretch, but I'm giving it to Shesterkin because, again, Anderson had his moments in this series where he gave up some opportunity, uh, very inopportune times, he gave up a goal and kept the Islanders in the series. He can't do that against the Rangers. And Shesterkin never really did that for the Capitals. He had the one bad goal in Game 3, like a minute in, where the Capitals scored. But other than that, that was pretty much it. We didn't really see Shesterkin giving up, like, a muffin. And there were a couple where, say, Anderson, you're kind of saying, you know, the Islanders don't typically score three goals in a game. He did that a couple times this series. That's got to clean up against the Rangers. I talked about how Carolina hasn't played well, but despite that, they still won. We'll see if they could get their act together here. Like I said, the Rangers were fairly dominant. Of course, winning in a sweep over the over the Caps, really no mercy in that one. Um, so now kind of getting to the matchup here. Both teams, in terms of their offense and defense. So the offense is really even between these both teams. They're both getting depth scoring. The difference, though, I might give this slight edge here to Carolina because, listen to me, hear me out, I think when you look at guys like Svechnikov, Aho, they have been more productive for the Hurricanes than the Rangers, Zibanejad, Panarin, Kreider. Yes, they were scoring, but not at the prolific rate that the Hurricanes did in their series. So I'm interested to see if we could see Zibanejad and Panarin. Yes, they did play. They were scoring, producing, but can they score a little bit more? Because I think against Carolina, they're going to need to give that little bit more. This is a different matchup. In the Capitals series, they could score three goals and win. You might not get that lucky against Carolina. Carolina can... Carolina can fight back. They can score goals, and they can score goals in bunches. Can we see more from Panarin and Zibanejad? Because that wasn't talked about in the first round series, but I think it's going to be talked about more in this series. And Alexi Lafreniere. I think Lafreniere had one goal in this series, maybe. Maybe he might have been held off the score sheet. Again, it was only four games, 
But Panarin, Lafreniere, Zibanejad, keep an eye out for those three. I'm going to give the slight edge here to Carolina, and, and you'll see why in a second. Because I think the rest of the way, the edge does go to the Rangers. The Rangers' defense was incredible against the Capitals. And I know the Capitals' offense wasn't really there. But I really, not only is it Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba, I know, those guys playing well, it's also Braden Schneider. It's Ryan Lindgren. Those defensemen played really well for the Rangers when they needed to most, and they shut down the Capitals. And there was times during the series that the the Hurricanes' defense gave life to the Islanders, and that's where there was maybe a little bit of a puncture there. And Brett Pesci not being in the lineup absolutely hurts the Hurricanes, no doubt about that. But you got to find a way with some of the other guys in there to step up. And we do know, listen, Jacob Slavin, Jalen Chatfield, Brent Burns, they got a lot of good defensemen there still, but it does hurt not having Brett Pesci there. And, and it is a little bit noticeable as that series went along. The longer that series went, the more Brett Pesci not being there was going to hurt the the blue line there for Carolina. A lot of minutes munched up, um, and it could have been even more had they not taken care of business um, against the Islanders. Um, so I'm going to give the edge. So offense... Hurricanes, defense, Rangers, but again, this whole series is going to prove that out on the ice for us. And goaltending, I'm going to give to the Rangers. So, offense, Hurricanes, Rangers, defense, Rangers, goaltending. But like I said, it is so close. And you guys, if you're going to really get caught up in the minutia, oh, this and this and this and this, it is so close. So, to get upset about that your team isn't one of those, the dominant in my opinion, it really doesn't matter. They're so freaking tight. It's more so if I had a gun to my head, which one would I choose right now? That's all it is. Don't don't read too much into it. Um, both teams will truly see where they stand in terms of the legitimacy of winning a Stanley Cup this year. Because I hate to say it, one of these teams is going to get robbed. I think both of these teams could probably deserve to get to the Stanley Cup final. They are both that good. With that said, life isn't fair. And one of these teams is going to lose in round two. But this is going to be a good litmus test for both these teams because let's be honest everybody was kind of goofing on both of these teams opponents they were supposed to beat these teams in four and five games the rangers were supposed to beat the capitals pretty swiftly and the Islanders were supposed to go out in at least five or six games to the to the hurricanes and they did so what do we expect here in this series and you know i think overall we're gonna see the emotional maturity of some of the younger players on both sides um you know, Jesperi Kokanyemi showed really good promising points in that series against the Islanders. He had a big hit against Cal Clutterbuck, I think in Game 2. Um, Freddie Anderson took a big bump from Anders Lee in Game 5. What happens when Chris Kreider or Matthew Rempe runs the net? Is Anderson going to kind of go up and kind of get off his game? I'm sure the Rangers saw that on tape. They're going to look at going after Anderson and making his life difficult. Keep an eye for guys like Barclay Goudreau, Rempe, and Kreider crashing the net, making things difficult on Anderson. I'm, I'm calling it now because they saw that clip of Anders Lee running into Anderson and him kind of fighting back and getting a little, a little agitated. Uh, the Rangers are definitely going to see that. Um, yeah, I wonder how things are going to go between the, the fisticuffs here in this series because there's a couple bigger players on Carolina. Brent Burns, Jacob Slavin's not much of a fighter, and he shouldn't be, but he's a bigger guy. Jalen Chatfield's a bigger guy. Stephen Nason took care of the Islanders' big boys. Matt Martin, Kyle McClain. Um, did he... I think he he dropped somebody, I think, else. I don't, I don't remember. Either way, Stephen Nason is the big boy. He's the... he's the When the bell rings in the, in the ring... Stephen Nason's the guy that the Islanders were targeting in that series, and he took care of most of the Islanders. How is he going to do potentially in a matchup against Truba or Rempe? That's going to be something to watch for in this series, because when it gets tough, who's going to step up for Carolina? And I think we kind of have an idea. Um, and like I said earlier, it might be the best series of the entire playoffs, depending on what happens in the East and the West and the Cup Final. This is really going to be a good series. I'm not just saying that. With that said, who do I think is going to win this series? And like I said, I, I think both these teams are really going to show us their true colors. Who has grown up more since the last time these two teams met? Um, the regular season matchup was pretty even. Carolina had one dominant win. I think they won 6-1 over the Rangers. Um, the other two matchups went to the Rangers, so it was like close 2-1, 3-1 games, and then the blowout win for the Hurricanes. That's So I don't really read much into that head-to-head -head matchup during the season because 
it really didn't do much for them. Um, it's kind of hard to decipher. It wasn't very one-sided, okay? Um, you know, both these teams played well in the first round, but like I said, who is going to win the litmus test in the second round? Carolina, with the ad the Canes admin pissing me off with the Islanders and all of that, or are the Rangers going to say, we're the New York team this year to beat, we're going to find a way, and ultimately, I am going against, and some people might say, Kevin, you're an Islanders fan, there's no way you're about to pick the New York Rangers here. For two reasons, I think the Rangers are the better team. I think that, uh, honestly, in terms of my heart and my mind, I think the Rangers win this series. Carolina really upset me with their first round. Now, this isn't all Canes fans, and a lot of you have come out and said, you know, I kind of criticized the, the Canes fans at the end of the series last year and this year um, during this matchup against the Islanders. I was kind of talking about the Hurricanes, and a lot of them came out, and you know what? Respect to them for taking it on the chin, and they're still here. So... There is hockey down there. I love the Canes fans. It's just, I wish they were a little bit more accountable for some of the, the BS because, unfortunately, there was a lot of it to the point where Ranger fans were actually sticking up for the Islanders a little bit. And, um, and ultimately, that's going to help in my decision here because even, even with everything said, I, I think that the New York Rangers are the better team here. I think it's going to be a really good matchup overall. This is going seven games. I would, again... I was wrong in a lot of the matchups in the first round, whether they would go seven games or not. I don't see how this series... If this series could go 14 games, it would. Um, I'm giving the New York Rangers in seven. I think they're the better team. They have home ice advantage. Carolina looked vulnerable on home ice. They looked kind of vulnerable on the road, too, and the Islanders were able to win those games. So, ultimately, I think the Rangers win this game, I, uh, this series. It's so freaking tight, though. I think the difference makers for the Rangers are their special teams is just so good. There is just no weakness to this team. Shesterkin, I think, can outduel either Kochekov or Anderson. And home ice advantage, whether it plays a factor or not, I think it's going to be part of the equation here going into the series. And I'm going to go with the Rangers in seven. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you guys think of this series? Who is going to win this matchup? Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. We're almost 20 minutes in here, guys. I really appreciate if you stuck around through the whole video. It does mean a lot. The channel's been growing a lot recently. I love my Ranger fans, eh, Hurricane fans. It's going to take a couple weeks, but I'm still there to support you, whether you win or lose this series. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you again next time. Peace out, guys.